Good morning guys, how's it going? James here from Car Radio, etc. Man, it's a uh, bit of a busy week ahead of us. Today I've got a few things I want to film. I've got a stereo to whack out in the Subaru Legacy real quick. Oh, it's locked. So, I'm just doing a real quick stereo installation into the Subaru Legacy. This one already has the fitting kit in it, so it's going to be a real simple stereo replacement with a pocket. Um, yeah, no, they just want to dink a single din with a pocket, not a double din, but that's up to them. So I'll do that, I'll snap my fingers and it'll be done. So, a couple of interesting jobs here though. This here we've got a, what year is it, I think a 2014? 2015 Nissan Leaf. Fully electric, no gasoline whatsoever. Um, I know that's no big deal, but to us it kind of is, just because we don't see them very often. It's just amazing how quiet they are, they just ghostly float along the floor. Um, what we're doing to it, Grant's going to be installing some front parking sensors. So if I get a chance after I've finished doing this or looking at the third thing, I'll try and document some of it since it's something a bit different. So this here is the great big electric engine. Huge motherfucker. These power cables. Oop, maybe I shouldn't touch them, they're probably high voltage. <laughs> there is a 12 volt battery, so that's good. So yeah, four front parking sensors along the front. Something different, like a pretty standard job for us, but the fact that it's an electric car, thought it might be interesting to document some of it if I get a chance and show you guys a few steps in between. But this is the uh, the big job of the week through here. This is a a big barbecue on wheels. So it's a trailer. Obviously, hook it up to your truck or whatever. And I've got like multiple barbecues, sinks. I got a feeling this is actually gonna be it's gonna be hooked up to beer, like beer on tap. So that's pretty cool. And they got like drawers and stuff in here. And they want us to put a sound system in it, which is pretty fucking mean. Um, I already had some ideas for it. This is the first time I've seen it though, and they have got their also their own ideas that they want us to do. So I'm gonna figure out what's available, figure out what's gonna be best for them, have a discussion with the customers. Their idea is to have two speakers on each of these four corners facing up like that, and a head unit of some kind over in this corner where they can control it. And I think an amplifier is probably gonna be needed as well since we're doing four speakers. My idea was to have, you know, the Rockford Fosgate, um, wake can speakers that are in their own pods hanging down from the roof about sort of here and I wanted to go for the big 8 inch ones with the horn tweeters because they'd be super loud so one in each corner facing outwards I thought that'd be quite cool but I'm not sure we're gonna see what's available um, I would like to do the PMX zero same as what I wanted to do for the Bayliner because they don't want radio and they just want a real simple little audio source for their phones and stuff so down, like they want it down around here somewhere. Originally I thought maybe over in that corner, but that's where the heat from the barbecue is, so it actually makes sense for it to be down here. So a PMX Zero here would be good, going to like a Rock from Fosgate marine grade four channel amp and, and eight marine grade speakers, because they're outside obviously. That sounds like a pretty good system, but we're gonna have to see what is available from Rockford. We did have to wait for that TM400X4 AD to come in when we were talking about doing it for the Bayliner and the PMX Zero wasn't even available to us so availability issues are going to be a thing I think and they want this trailer back Wednesday night it's Monday morning so we've got three solid days to work on it but I haven't got three solid days to work on it because I've got to do jobs in between so it's all a bit time pushy but hopefully it all works out so in this video I think I'm going to quickly whack out that Subaru Legacy's stereo by snapping my fingers I'll try and show some steps of the front parking sensors along the way and ultimately figure out what's going to happen with this trailer. You can follow along with that project in, um, on YouTube because I'll do more than one video for this trailer obviously. It's going to be spanned across half a week. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Something a bit different. Now that Grant's uh, not talking, let's just have a quick sit in and look at this thing. This is the leaf. It's just like so many blue accents because it's like all emission free and everything like that they're very proud of themselves being emission free i'm not going to drive it or anything like that but grant moved it around a wee bit just before and literally the only sound you hear is the tires rubbing on the concrete it just goes like you know 
like rubbery tires on polished concrete. Yeah, it just glides. I wonder what sort of acceleration it's got. I know that electric motors actually have more potential torque than gasoline motors. So I'd be really interested to see. I think it's probably not that grunty. It's like meant to be a nice efficient car. If you wanted a grunty electric car, you'd have to get, have to get yourself like a Tesla Model X or something like that, which are like the ultimate electric, ve electric vehicle, I believe. But yeah, that's what's happening with this thing. I'm not sure if we're doing like a screen or anything up here, but obviously there will be a buzzer of some kind. And I'll try and show some steps of this along the way. Quickly over to that legacy. What else have I got to do today? I'm sure that legacy isn't the only job. Oh. Today, Nissan Leaf, that's Grant. Sparrow Legacy, that's me. Oh, the Golf, uh, that's already done. Oh, sweet, so that's these are the only jobs for today, and then I've got the uh, trailer. Tomorrow, there's only one Caldena, and Wednesday, Wednesday, there's a couple of bigger jobs booked in. We're just gonna have to see what we can do. Okay, let's get the stereo replaced. Three, two, one. There we go, stereo in, looking good. I uh, colour match the colour of the screen and stuff to the heater so that it all looks nice and OEM. Um, yeah, good to go. By the way, that on average is all the shit I have to take out of one of these cars. Not just Subaru's, Toyota's as well, pretty much anything that's come from Japan. On average I have to take out all of this wiring and crap. Oh and I just realised I haven't taken off these TV aerials either. I'll do that real quick and get rid of that plastic, piece of plastic there. But other than that, um, it'll be job done. So that's that. We'll look at what Grant's up to with the sensors. Okay. So he's got his holes drilled by the look of it, measured out where they need to be. Them on the other side. And I think we do have the stuff here but they're not painted yet so we're waiting on Pat to go out and come back with some paint for it so that they are colour match. So I'll quickly take those aerials off, park this outside, drop the job sheet and then after that I need to crack on to um, contacting Rock for Fosgate about getting some gear for that trailer and getting overnighted to us because we are on a time crunch. Okay so legacy is done. I need to measure up the points on where the speakers are going to go on this trailer so we know what sort of size we can go for because Rock for Fosgate make a six inch and a six and a half. So I'm going to figure out what space we've got to work with and then what speaker to go from, go with from there. I'm just going to, because we're on a time constraint, go with what the customer wants. Two speakers on each pillar and I need to measure the front ones and the back ones. Back ones, let's go for over this side. Back ones we've got, looks like about, at the most, 190 to work with. 190 in the front, about the same, 190. Let's check that at the top as well. Yep, 190. Uh, they are the same at the front and back, right? Yeah, we've got 190 of width to work with. So, hopefully we can fit the six and a halves. So now I just need to go into the Rock for Fosgate website and see what ones are gonna fit, and hopefully they are available in stock. So we're gonna be looking at the PM2652B. Oh, yep, these ones. Six and a half inch black speakers, black and chrome, even though that I reckon black will look the best, Grant, what do you think? Because they'll stand out better. And then they'll kind of match the uh, wheels, because the wheels are basically black and chrome, or black and silver. I think white, white and silver. I think they'll just blend in a bit too much. I reckon black, make them stand out. And also once you've opened it up, there's a lot more uh, black and silver elements. I think white would just be a bit too blendy. I'm gonna make a judgment call. Okay, so PM2652B. Six and a half inches, we need to go to the, oh, have we got the specifications here? No, we need to go to the manual support. Okay, PM2652B owner's manual. Dimensions once they load. Okay, there we go. Oh, wait, that's the 282. Here we go, PM2652. Total width is 180 millimeters. That's good. So we can fit the six and a halves. And the mounting width is, 140. Wonder what the um, the two, what the uh, six inch ones are like. Bit smaller. They're smaller by two millimeters. <laughs> Funny. Okay, yep. Six and a halves it is. So I need to make a list of the things that I want. All right, I'll give you, I'll check back in once I've called the suppliers and we'll see what's available. Okay guys, so I've ordered the gear. We're getting a Rockford Fosgate PMX Zero, which is a ampless little controller 
that has RCA pre-outs on it, it has Bluetooth, auxiliary and USB input. No radio, just bog standard, that's pretty much what the customer wants anyway. We're going for the Rockford Fosgate TM400 X4 AD, same one as the one that I put in the bay liner, nice and efficient and compact and marine grade. And I spoke to the customer, he's not really sure how much they are being allowed or how much they want to spend on this because obviously it's like a one-off, it's a project sort of thing. Um, and the price difference between one speaker in each pillar and two speakers, he didn't really know if he wanted to spend the price for two speakers in each, but he wants us to wire it up so that we can add more later on if we, if he wants. He did say he wanted the best possible sound that's going to cover the most area, which I explained to him is definitely going to be to have two speakers in each pillar, but for the, because, because it's going to be a big labour job, he doesn't really know how much he wants to spend on it. Um, so we're doing just one for now. I'm going to put it up the top here and that's going to leave a nice spot down the bottom here for a second one to be added on later on if we need to. And the good thing about the Rockford Fosgate marine speakers is that they actually have four terminals on them, two positives and two negatives, which means it'll be real easy for us just to put a little parallel loop from the first speaker down to the second speaker once we install it. And we're going to run some nice heavy gauge, some heavy 12 or 16 gauge wire or something to um, run the speakers enough that it's going to be able to run two speakers so probably 12 gauge i think so it's ordered it's on its way hopefully it's going to be picked up about 12 30. i've jacked up the courier to do an overnight delivery and hopefully it arrives although we have had troubles with it in the past it might arrive on wednesday at this rate in which case it's going to be like a quick job but what can you do there's not much i mean what can you do the customer kind of dropped it on us said i want this all done now we don't keep that gear in stock because we don't sell very much of it. So that we're doing what we can. So today what I can do <coughs> is I can cut holes for the four speakers. I can run wires for them. I can run RCAs. I can do wires for the run wires from the speaker holes to the amplifier, which we're going to mount in this cubby hole here because in this one here, this is where the keg goes that goes from goes up to those taps there for the beer so there's gonna be ice in there and a bunch of moisture so in here this is where the gas bottle goes for the barbecue and i'm probably going to mount the amplifier up nice and high out of the way up there somewhere that i think will be the best way to go just out of the way where it's not going to get damaged and then the head unit the little flush mount pmx zero thing they said they wanted it over in this corner so we're thinking we're gonna have to mount it on like some sort of little plastic box or something because it does have a it does through mount We'll figure it out when we get it, but I can at least run wires over to this sort of point here. And that's what all I need to do. You're jacking off. Wait. That could, that could be an internet gift. Yeah. Every angle. You need this on a rotating, you need a, yeah, a yeah. you need a pottery <laughs> stepper thing <laughs> that rotates it. Yeah. And then you can go tss, put it on the uh, table router. Spin it like a million miles an hour. 20,000 RPM. Are you doing a screen or anything in the leaf or just? Yeah, it's got a bar thing. A bar, yeah. yeah. All right, so I need to kind of, not really sure where to start. I think the best place to start would be cutting the holes out for the speakers, just to get the hard part out of the way. And then I, I think, can. I think you're gonna have to use a nibbler. Nibbler? Yeah, or the, the jigsaw. jigsaw blade will go through yeah, the other side, you see. Is, yeah, I suppose there's two, this is the thing guys, this is two layers, there's one here and another one like maybe an only another inch and a half behind here it's actually not one panel it's two so it's gonna I, be a I bitch would, <coughs> i would um probably you need to get a cut out of your um i'll make another template up like i did for the uh yeah, you need, eights you need a carbal one just to you can glue on here just in case when you're power filing you don't because you're gonna the nibble is going to get real close but then to do the last bit you're gonna have to use the power, power file yeah tidy it up and on the other side, you can make the hole maybe a bit smaller. Mm, yeah, I don't know how big the magnet on them is. Because you won't, you won't know how, because it, obviously it starts off this big, but then it goes down. So this side here. Could it's be not big. like the Type R's though. Those you've still the eights. They're like subwoofers almost. They're not super deep, but they're wide. <coughs> I don't know what the sixes are going to be like. Shit, this is already scuffing off. Look at that. Wasn't us. Maybe I'll make a template up like I did for the eights, out of some thin MDF, and then I can put it on the position, mark it, and then try and figure out how I want to cut it out. I reckon, like measuring the distance, I reckon for the center grant, halfway between here and here. So it's smack in the middle there. And then the second one can be the same down here. 
Mm. So it's like evenly distributed, centre line, centre line, and then centre line from A to B. Mm. There we go, template ring made up. So now this outer diameter is the total width of the grill and the inner diameter is the cutout. So I can position this on the trailer and use a, a Sharpie or a Vivid and mark, I can use it to position it with the outer one and then mark the inner one with the Vivid. Man, it would just look so cool if there were two. Just so much cooler. Oh, well, I'm gonna do the first ones up the top. Two would look so cool, man. Like. How much money do you think they've sunk into doing all this shit? They wouldn't have gone cheap on that. Yeah, so there's my ring. I've uh, marked vertically and horizontally where the centre of the hole is going to need to be. Ooh, is that right? Because 180 divided by 2 is... Oh, I see what's happening. Yep, I'm doing it wrong. What I might do is just use this to help me try and get it as centred as possible. So if I mark... If I put... Oh, come on that over that center point there, that centered, and then I sort of, this isn't the actual hole, I'm just sort of doing this to make a bit of a circle so that I can position the other one a bit better. There we go, so I've got a bit of a circle there. So now I can put this one on and try and get that as close to square with the first circle as possible. Mark it. That looks pretty good to me, I'd say that's about right. There we go, there's my circle. So now I need to do this on three more. There we go. There's my four holes marked, ready to be cut out. I think what I should do now, is I need to try and drill through both layers squarely. Okay guys, got the hole cut out, um, came across an issue, there's a bar just there, a support beam, didn't know it was there, you can't tell by looking from this side, so what I did was I, had, I got the template out again, moved it over slightly, marked a wider ring and then filed the rest out. So what this means is that the rest of the holes are all going to have to be moved over by about five mils at least. That one hole took me longer than I thought it would. Aluminium, the aluminium that this is, it files quite easily but in really like small grains and so it took quite a while just to get that, just to get that out with the nibbler and the power hole. I'm a more efficient wirer than I am cutter or fabricator so I'm going to start moving on to the wiring side of things I think and me and Grant are gonna both be working on this all day tomorrow. So hopefully he'll be able to get some cutting in done because he's better at that than I am. So I'm gonna move on to some wiring and try and get that done. Okay guys, so I measured up and made up the loom which is gonna run the full length of the trailer. Hopefully I've got everything the right length. It's not, I mean, the, it's not exactly to length but as long as I've got everything reaching to the spots it needs to, we'll be good. So this end here, this is the end that'll be by the amp. So we got Four, four RCA inputs, remote wire from the head unit, and a power and an earth for the head unit because I'm going to double those onto the power supply for the amplifier. We got our four speaker wires, 12 gauge because we might be running up to eight speakers off this one amp, so 12 gauge is what we're using. Um, one of them unfortunately had to be green fusion 12 gauge because I actually ran out entirely of this uh, installer bay silver stuff. So we follow down the loom. The front speaker wires jump, um, make their way out of the loom to go off to the front speakers. All the way down to here where the rear right speaker 
Mate, jumps out of the loom. Further down, and then we've got the RCA connections and the power wires for the head unit, and then a wee bit longer again for the rear left speaker. So I need to measure up all this wire that I've used and wrote it and note it down so I know what to charge them. Because man, there's some weight to this thing. It's like pretty thick. The way I'm gonna get it through the wall, because this wall here isn't just one layer, it's two layers. This layer and this layer. I'm gonna have this piece of uh, PVC tube going from flush from this wall through into this wall about sort of here-ish I'm guessing and then all the wires will come through there and it'll be siliconed into place and then I'll uh, probably conduit and cable tie it all the way along with this uh, these are the uh, tubes for the beer from the keg here I'm gonna cable tie it along there the wires will jut out and go to their respective speakers and across up to the head unit and the speaker there so that's what I've just gotten done GoPro is about to run out of battery, I'm going to charge it up soon. Okay, so I'm going to drill the uh, holes through now for the hole for the uh, PVC tube and the wires to go through. I'm just going to go to the right of this connection and up a wee bit because straight to the right of it there's a tube on the other side of this that goes sideways. So I need to go pretty much at the level of this connection here, but obviously to the right. So on a 45 to this. So I think if I do a quick doodle. Get my head in here. About there. Probably about there, I think that's where I want to put it. Okay, there's the other side. Okay, let's have a look at where we came out. Uh why don't I see it? Oh, it's actually three walls, not two. There's one wall, two walls, three walls. So I need to go even further through. I don't know if my 3mm bit gets much longer than that. Oh yeah, it's only that deep. Oh man, we're almost there. What I'm going to do is use a 6mm to go the rest of the way through because the bit for the hole cutter is a 6mm. So I can use this to follow through. Okay. There we're through, I think. There it is, just making it through. Let's go from the other side. Ah, motherfucker! I'm going to have a bruise there now. Ooh, that hurt. Okay, now I need to use the old hole cutter. I want to be careful doing this because a shard of aluminium can come off, go into the gas pipe, spark whilst in the gas pipe, ignite the fuel. There's the second hole. Maybe I should check that this is fitting. Oh yeah, a bit of space there. Now I need to go and do the inside one. Oh, it's hot. Hot. So the trick is whether we can get the PVC through or not. Should be able to go all the way through. There we go. Sweet. So I can cut that to length and uh, silicone it in. Okay guys, so I've uh, put the loom in a big fat piece of split conduit. I was thinking about running it now, but I don't know if I want to go through the tube at the end there yet or not because the silicon RTV is obviously drying. It takes a while to dry and I just like it to sit there and float in the best position. I'm not sure, I might put it through. But I was thinking I could, you know, start at least sort of laying and running it along here. We'll see, I might chuck you on a time lapse. Okay guys, got the uh, wiring pretty much plumbed all the way from the front to the back. I haven't stuck it through the uh, PVC hole just yet though, because the, the silicon, the cork, 
is still drying and when I tried threading it through there it started moving it around and decentering it so I think I just want to leave that to dry overnight so that the PVC is nice and centered in the cork and also so it stays in the right position and then I'll thread it through tomorrow. But you can see here in the corner I've got the wires coming up for the head unit which is going to be mounted up in this sort of corner here and they should be just the right length. In this big thick conduit I actually managed to sort of press fit it down in this corner here in this ridge so it actually is nicely tucked out of the way there. Um, why I didn't just go straight under there into the corner is because this lip and the same on the other side comes down really close to this floor so I couldn't go out and under. I didn't actually didn't know how I was going to do it until I figured this out. And then it's just plumbed all the way up, cable tied to the uh, line here. Put another piece on this one here for that speaker. Pretty much ready to go. Just more of the hard stuff to come now which is cutting the holes and getting the speaker wires from the corners up to them somehow because we just figured out that there's actually like a strut or a something strength wise in here so it's not hollow all the way through which is a bastard. Just run our speaker wires through the tap like that. That's how we do it. Yeah, not really sure what I'm up to doing now because um, it's just the hole cutting stuff and that's a bastard. Okay guys, so it's like nearly five o'clock, it's the end of the day. Not really much more we can do today. I think we and Grant are gonna, you know, tackle the issue of drilling these holes out tomorrow. And we've also discovered that we need to do the power wires to the battery because the batteries are in there but with no clamps or anything on them, just they're just sitting unused. So we need to work that out tomorrow. Done everything I can today. I'll see you then. Thank you.